In 2017, F1 track testing is severely restricted. Just eight days pre-season, two two-day in-season tests in Bahrain and Hungary, before a final test in Abu Dhabi after the championship has been run and won. It's a far cry from the sport's unlimited testing era before 2009, when cars pounded tracks relentlessly throughout the year. The peak coming in 2006, with 61 drivers notching up over 400,000 kilometers. The 2009 testing ban dropped costs dramatically, but it also saw the rise of multi-million dollar simulators, constantly updated to closely match the real car and provide the same feedback. I think in F1, the level of uh, the simulator are quite high. Uh, we use it a lot for setup and uh, for, for car development. McLaren was the simulator trailblazer, with former team boss Ron Dennis beginning development in 1998. But it's a technology all teams now have access to, with Red Bull and Mercedes its rivals for the cutting edge. The simulators, much like their road car counterparts, generally comprise a seven-poster rig, along with a survival cell and wide-angle display. and are best suited to setup work, creating a baseline for the engineers not only ahead of a Grand Prix, but also throughout the weekend. Maybe we do the free practice and then we, we ask the simulator guys to, to test something uh, for us that uh, we implement those changes on Saturday morning before qualifying, so uh, there are a lot of work going on on the, on the simulator in F1. The technology can also be used to simulate new hardware, such as new buttons for the steering wheel or other things like engine modes. Making the simulator integral to improving car performance, especially in F1's all new era, in which the scope for development is huge. I think the powertrains will still make a, a lot of a difference, um, but obviously it'll, it'll lessen it a bit. Um, it'll probably be how fast the teams can get on top of things, how good their simulations are, how good their simulators are. 